Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and this is part two of my Beethoven for Elise rhythm tutorial. In this tutorial we will be covering in detail the B section of this piece which is this section. So let's get to the tutorial. The next section is called the B section. It's measures 23 to 27, and it's much more complicated rhythmically. Whereas in the A section, there was a lot of taking turns between the hand, but the B section is a lot more hands playing at the same time or right hand holding while the left hand's playing. So my main suggestion for this section is gonna be to keep the 16th notes nice and steady in the left hand and then the right hand's going to be doing lots of different stuff on top of that. So because this is more challenging, I am going to take this section literally one measure at a time. So before we start the measure by measure tutorial of the B section, I want to quickly touch on an artistic choice that you can make in measure 22 and that's the three chords that are highlighted there in pink. You see that big X in the music I just put that in there because I'm going to assume we're playing through the second time and transitioning into the B section. So we can either play those three chords straight through, no slowing down, right into the B section. I'm going to start where that arrow is in measure 20. So that works really nicely, just kind of eases on into the new section. But you can also choose to stretch those last three chords in measure 22. There's a lot of harmonic information on them. And so if we kind of skim over it, we might lose some of the intensity of those three chords, which are bringing us into this cheerier key of F major. The first part was in a minor, more serious key. So if you like, you can also just play those just the tiniest bit slower. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll start at the same spot. And then right back to tempo. So both of those transitions sound beautiful from the A section to the B section. Just choose the one that you like. Now I'm going to go through this B section basically measure by measure because the hands together are so much more complicated than the A section. So starting off in measure 23, we have some grace notes. There's those tiny little notes that come before beat one. They actually make an F chord. So when you play hands together, you can either play those grace notes before the beat or you can play the first grace note with the left hand note. If you choose to play the grace notes before the beat, then you have to start them as soon as you're done playing the last chord so you don't lose any time coming into measure 23. So what I mean by that is we're not going to go. You have to start playing them as soon as you're done with that last chord. Right hand has just to go for it because we want to get there together. So it will sound like this. Here it is slowly. And a little more quickly. Now, if you choose to play the first grace note with the left hand, so that would be this F played with this F, then the only thing you have to do is play the grace notes a little bit faster so you get to the C in the right hand before your left hand plays its second note. So slowly. See how I got there first? Then the left hand goes. Now a little bit more quickly. I think playing the grace note before the beat sounds a little bit more vocal, whereas on the beat sounds like a quick flourish. So choose the one you like better and play it that way. Here they are one more time. Here's before the beat. And here it is on the beat. In measure 23, after the grace notes, the hands are playing different rhythms. The right hand has a quarter note which is the duration of four 16th notes. So the hands will play together and then the right hand will stay down for three more 16th notes. So it will sound like this. One and two and. So you're gonna hold the right hand down when you play all four of those left hand notes. One and two and here it 
this with the grace note. Next on beat three, we're gonna encounter that dotted 16th note, 32nd rhythm I was talking about. So when you have a dot on the side of a note, like we have here, what it means is the note with the dot is one and a half times as long as it normally is. So if you look at that first highlight in blue, you'll see that dotted 16th note is equal to three 32nd notes. So two 32nd notes equals a 16th note, and then one more. So you can see how those notes would line up with each other. However, the left hand is only playing 16th notes. So in the last measure of that diagram, highlighted in blue, you can see the hands will play together, then the left hand will play by itself, and then the right hand will play by itself. So it's a little bit tricky at first. First thing you have to do is make sure that you have a fingering that works for you. So there are a few options for the fingering for the right hand in this spot, which I'll discuss in another video. So right now, let's use three, two, three for the right hand going into that next measure. So you're gonna do three, two, three. We're gonna switch fingers on this same E here, three, two, three. And then on beat three, we're gonna use one, three, five. You'll see this is just the spot that's highlighted in yellow up above. By the way, even though we have 30 second notes in this measure, which are a further subdivision, for the counting, we are just gonna stick to one and two and three and, and fit the extra 30 seconds in between those counting subdivisions. So hands together, measure 23, beat three. We're gonna have hands together on beat three. So left hand thumb, right hand finger three together. And that will be three. And then left hand alone on the and. And, and then the right hand's gonna come in between that. And then beat one, next measure. One, three, and one, three, and one. So this second finger is gonna be pretty quick and it will take a little bit of practice to get the feel of that right hand coming so quickly after the left hand. So I'm gonna play the whole measure now with the grace notes before the beat. I'll do it first slowly and then more quickly. Here we go. Here's slowly. One and two and three and one and two. Now a little more quickly. In the next measure, measure 24, beat three has the same rhythm as measure 23 dotted 16th followed by 32nd, but you'll see the right hand has two eighth notes this time instead of a quarter note. So the right hand will play one note when the left hand plays two, then on beat three, the rhythm will be the same as before. So slowly, that will sound like this. One and two and three and one. Here it is more quickly. One and two and three and then in measure 25, both hands have 16th notes, so they will all play at the same time. So the only thing you'll need to think about here is sometimes it's a little hard to play those chords together. So I like to feel like I'm digging in on those chords, pressing a little bit harder. So this will sound like this slowly. One and dig in. And a little bit faster. One and two and three. Moving ahead to measure 26, let's start with beat three with the 30 second notes. Each 16th subdivides into two 30 seconds. So the right hand will play two notes for every left hand notes, and we're only gonna be saying something or counting with the left hand. So every other right hand note is gonna come in between the counting. So slowly it will feel like this. Three and, and a little faster, three and, so you get used to playing really quickly with your right hand on these 30 second notes. The other thing we're gonna go over in this measure here is the grace note. And just like before, this grace note can be played two different ways. You can either play it before the beat or on the beat. You're gonna use finger three for that grace note, by the way, on the B flat. And remember to play it on B flat. Sometimes people forget that that flat at the beginning of the measure lasts for the whole measure. So the grace note will also be a flat key. If you play it before the beat, it's gonna fit in after that second A, just where I put that little red arrow in the diagram. So it will sound like this. One and two and by itself. And a little bit more 
quickly. One and two and three and. Now, if you choose to play the grace note on the beat, that means you're gonna play that grace note B flat with the left hand C. And you're gonna play the first two notes of those 30 seconds really quickly. So you're gonna go. It's almost like a little chirp. It's like you fall down into that A. But my point is all three of those notes have to go with this C because that next A, finger two, needs to come with that A. So it'll be like this, slowly. A little bit more quickly. Now here it is in context, the whole measure. One and two and. And then here it is quickly. One. So again, with regards to these grace notes, choose which one you like and play it that way. Okay, moving on to measure 27. This one is pretty straightforward in terms of rhythm. Right hand has a quarter note, four sixteenth notes. So the hands will play together on beat one, one and two, and then together, together. So here it is a little more quickly, one and two and three and. Moving on to measure 28, also pretty straightforward in terms of rhythm. Now the right hand, instead of a quarter note, has a dotted eighth note. The dot means to play one and a half times the note. So you'll see in the diagram above, a dotted eighth note is equal to three sixteenth notes. So in this measure, the hands will play together on beat one. Right hand holds for two more left hand notes. And then together, together, together. Let's do that a little more quickly. One and two and three and. So moving forward into measure 29. In some editions, including this one, you'll see an ornament. And an ornament is the thing written above the staff that looks kind of like a backward sideways S. This is called a turn. So when you see this ornament, it means to play the note above the written note. So our written note on beat one is a C. So the note above that is a D. Then play the written note, go back through. Then go underneath the main written note, B, and then C. So the turn will consist of four notes. It's going to be D, C, B, C, using fingers three, two, one, two. So I'm going to show you two different rhythms you can use for this ornament. One is slower and one is more quick. So again, we're going to do fingering two. We're going to start with two on the C and then the turn will be three, two, one, two. So the first way you can play the turn is simply to play it as four 32nd notes. This would change the C in beat one into an eighth note. And then beat two would be four 32nd notes and then followed by the dotted 16th note, 32nd note figure we've already seen. So hands together with the slower version of the turn, those 32nd notes, will be together on the one, one, left hand alone on the and, and then together on the two, right hand plays two notes, together on the and, together on three, left hand on the and by itself. Let's do that a little more quickly. One and two. and even a little bit more quickly, one and two and three and one. It's really beautiful and elegant to play it that way. The other way is to play the entire turn on the and of two. So if we do it this way, we're gonna have three notes in the left hand, one and two, then together on the and of two, right hand's gonna play four notes right here. And then together on three, left hand on the and by itself, right hand in between. Here it is slowly. One and two and This also sounds very beautiful. So choose the one you like and play it that way. Or play it with no ornament whatsoever. One and two and three and one. Okay, moving ahead. Measure 30. Now, the right hand has entirely 30 second notes. 
So the main thing to focus on here is keeping a steady count with the one and two and three and, because the right hand is gonna be twice as fast as most of the notes we've played so far. And we just need those beats to remain consistent. So if we have one and two and three and one and two and three and one, right hand just all of a sudden goes a lot more quickly. Really all we need to do in this measure 30 is line up the left hand. So first the left hand has eighth notes, which are equal to four 32nd notes. So all four of those notes are gonna go with the left hand. And then directly after that, the left hand has a 16th note rest, which will be two more 32nd notes. And then for the rest of the measure, the left hand will have 16th notes, which means the right hand will play two notes every time the left hand plays a 16th note. So like that. And I also want to point out that the left hand moves up to the treble clef here. So it's almost like the hands are sharing treble G. You see where I put that green highlight? Move up to the new position during that rest. One and move. Here it is a little more quickly. One and two and three and one. Measure 31 is a little more straightforward. The left hand just has eighth notes, which will line up with the first note of every group of the right hand, 30 seconds. So this is gonna feel like together, right, 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 together, right, 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 together, right, 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 together. I definitely suggest making sure you have a solid fingering for the right hand in this measure so you know exactly which right hand finger is going to play when the left hand plays. So right now I'm doing five, four, together on three, cross with three, together on two, and together on one. That makes it easier if you can line up those finger numbers. So more quickly, it's going to feel like this. One and two and three and now measure 32 and 33, the rhythm is exactly the same as it was in 30 and 31. The only difference is at the beginning of 33, instead of having a third, we just have a one middle C by itself, but we still have the moving up. Moving ahead next, we're coming to one of the most magical places in this piece, measures 34 to 38. Beethoven wrote in this incredible transition and it's totally worth the effort to really figure out the timing in this section. I'm gonna play it for you right now. There's lots of details here, so let's go over them. So in measure 34, you can easily see the right hand still has all of these crazy 32nd notes. The left hand's just playing on beat one. So all the right hand needs to do is keep steady. One and two and three and one. Then in measure 35, all of a sudden it slows down. The right hand has a dotted eighth note followed by three sixteenth. Now because this dotted eighth note comes after all of those 32nd notes. Sometimes pianists don't want to hold that quite long enough. And so the tendency is to rush through that note. So if you really want to make sure you get the rhythm correct, what I'm going to suggest is put the metronome on 16th notes. So I'll show you what I mean. And then keep those 16th notes consistent playing into this transition. One and two and three and one and two and three and three clicks on the dotted eighth note. Measure 36 and 37, again, really pay attention to the timing. Right hand has that dotted eighth note, one and two, followed by two sixteenth notes, and then that pattern of three half steps that we've had before. And one and two and three, those alternating half steps before that melody starts again. So one, one and two and three, three half steps, changing hands. 
Now, in measure 38, this is really important. You know how I was talking about the melody of the A section? One, two, three. Every time during the A section, we have three E's. When we return to the A section after this B section, the first time this melody only has two E's. You will hear people play this wrong all the time. So I'm giving you this information so you can play it correctly. So we have three alternating half steps and one and two and three. Now only two E's and one and two and three and one. So now I'm going to go back to measure 34 and play this whole section counting out slowly. Again, the main considerations are waiting long enough on each dotted eighth note and then only playing two E's when you come back to the melody. So here it is slowly starting in measure 34. One and two and three and one and two and three. It feels super slow. One and two and three three, three half steps, and one, and two, and three, two E's, not three. Now here it is a little more quickly. Ready, and. Now I'm gonna play the entire B section very slowly, talking you through all of the changes we just discussed in this tutorial. Okay, here's starting in measure 22, super slow. One and two. Chord, chord, chord I've played before. One, four notes here, the left hand. Together, left, right, together, two notes. Two notes with the left hand. Together, left, right, everyone playing at the same time. Two notes and two come before. Two notes, two notes, four notes with the right hand. Then together on the sixteenths. Then three left hand notes here. Together, together together. I'm going to play it as 30 seconds together, left, right, two notes, two. Move to the bass, left, left hand, every four right hands, four notes. Move up on the rest, two notes, two notes, two notes. super slow and three and one and two and three only two e's one and two and three and one all right thank you for watching this video explaining the rhythm for for Elise by beethoven this video covered the B section of the piece, so be on the lookout for two more videos. One will be the C section of the piece, and one will be concentrating on the fingering. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and also I welcome comments and questions. Please let me know how you're doing with your piano playing. As always, thank you for watching.